Hello everybody and welcome to this video which is kindly sponsored by Squarespace. This week we're looking at something fairly simple which also doubles as kind of a small announcement. So the meeting drag page as you can see here of the site has the well Australia trip as it was. So I'm going to update that. I'm going to put Australia 2023 into complete just by going into edit text. And of course as soon as I hit save this will update to the live site so it's nice and quick and easy. So there's going to be a short-ish US trip in September and just entering the dates now exactly what I'm going to be doing in Bremerton Seattle in those opening dates you can see being typed up there I haven't worked out the precise schedule for but the Forest S Sherman class destroyer that's on display there will be one of the things that's being visited so you can look forward to meeting me there if you happen to live in the northwestern part of the United States then the next section Again, currently under a little bit of advisement, but essentially the central part of the northern US. So that's going to be potentially a visit to Chicago to see U505. I definitely want to go and see USS Silversides and then USS Cod. And then finally the Hintza conference before I head back home. And then save it. And that's it. The site's been updated. So if after all these little mini tutorials I've been doing, you think you could build a website for maybe ideally naval history purposes but you never know you might want to do it for some other reason then head over to squarespace.com forward slash drakenfell you can get a free trial and once you're ready that little link will give you 10 percent off your first website or domain so thanks once again to squarespace for sponsoring the video and on with the main show right hello everyone and welcome to a friday video this is the last of the videos on the spanish armada of 1588 at the moment we might come back to a few more details depending on what you want to see but for this last episode in this little four-part series we're going to be looking at what the food was uh, that was available to the sailors in both the English fleet and the Spanish fleet. Now for that we're going to reference this rather wonderful melee weapon dash tome which is of course Armada the Spanish Enterprise and England's Deliverance in 1588 by Colin Martin and Geoffrey Parker. As you can tell it's got a lot of information and it will be it is the first link in the sources description for the various videos we've done on the Armada so far. Now the interesting page for us today is the one I've bookmarked. Now this is the rations page and as each ration appears we will be obviously putting that up in text on the side but I'd be interested to know a few points. One is that unsurprisingly the Spanish and English rations were relatively different but at the same time there are some surprising crossovers which speaks to the not necessarily globalized but at least interconnected nature of trade at the time. Another interesting thing to point out for those of you who are good at rapid calorie counting is as we go through these various ingredients and the collective dishes you might be a little bit horrified at just how many calories are being taken in per day but you have to remember two things one this is a very different dietary balance to what most of us are going to be eating these days and secondly the people who are eating this diet bear in mind this is the regular sailors diet not the officers they will be burning through those calories quite a lot back in the economic recession not this lot one but the one before <laughs> 2008 through 2013 uh, about halfway through that I found myself having to take work on building sites and during that period I was consuming three and a half four thousand plus calories a day easily and coming home feeling rather tired rather empty and uh, losing weight quite rapidly so I had to up, up my calorie count even more now if I was to eat that same diet now where although I'm still relatively physically, physically active with my various hobbies I'm nowhere near as active on a long-term day-to-day basis as I was when I was in construction I would very rapidly become a sphere and that's what you've got to bear in mind with these. These are the diets of sailors who are one not in insulated or air-conditioned buildings so their bodies are having to work to keep them warm at sea most of the time especially in the English Channel and then later for the Spanish in the North Sea and into the Atlantic and two they're doing quite hard physical work all day so they're going to be burning off a lot of this energy. Now with all that said let's get on to what the various diets were. First what we're going to look at is the stuff that's common i.e. the stuff that would be issued every day 
as part of the individual rations, and then we'll go through day by day. So we're going to start off with the Spanish, and I'm just going to refer to the book here occasionally. So the Spanish would be issued as their basic ration, either one and a half pounds of ship's biscuit, but if you've seen the 18th century food video, uh, you already know what ship's biscuit is, you already know what a horrific culinary experience that is, and uh, since some of you seem rather disconcerted by the fact that you can hear it being crunched through the padding of my mouth and the intervening five foot to the camera, we don't have to do ship's biscuit, but because there is another option, which is two pounds of fresh bread. Now to give you some idea, each of these is a freshly prepared one pound loaf. So we have our two pounds of fresh bread as our basic uh, dry ration, if you will. And now we have our basic daily wet ration. Now this is either um, one and a third pints of wine or one pint of what they call candia wine, which is a bit stronger as well as three pints of water for all purposes, which would include cutting with the wine, because this has to last you all day. So you've basically got four to four and a half pints of liquid. So for that purpose, we have some water, and this is probably going to stretch <laughs> our total glass capacity here at uh, Kitchen Drac. So we have one and a half pints of water to start with. That's not particularly brilliant, but we've only lost a little bit. So that's just over a pint and a half. Right, so you've got one and a half pints of water, and we need to go up to three. Now, one, two more. So let's get our carafes. That's one pint. Oh, look, I'm getting better at this. So we've got one and a half pints in there, one pint in there, so we need another half pint. Right, so there's our three pints of water, which incidentally also lets me know exactly that the capacity of these, <laughs> these glasses is three quarters of a pint apiece. So, we'll move that into a nice little formation over to one side, and you'll see why in a second. Because now we have to get our one pint, in this case, of wine. So of course I went down and got a Spanish wine, because hey, they were starting, well, a fair bunch of them were starting in Lisbon, so maybe it would have been Portuguese, but hey, it's all the Iberian Peninsula, and they stopped in Coruna, and Coruna is in Spain. Now we try and do this without breaking my arm, since I have a sprained arm. So, <laughs> after some off-screen struggling, and yes, this is probably heresy to those of you who actually care about wine, but whatever. Um, little bit left. Probably use that for cooking in a minute. And this is where we really hope I've gotten better at pouring because otherwise this is going to get very messy very quickly. There we go. Exactly one pint of strong wine. So, liquid ration and basic dry ration for the Spanish Navy. And now on to the English rations. Now, the English rations 
are a bit more varied on a day-to-day -day basis, which we'll see in a minute, but your basic dry ration is one pound of bread or biscuit. So half a pound less biscuit if compared to the Spanish rations, or a full pound less of bread if compared to the Spanish rations. Now, the bread would be available if it was freshly made, and apart from the fact we've already seen what biscuit is like in a previous video, the other reason I'm going with bread is because, for, at least for the English, remember, they're starting out from their home ports and they're constantly getting resupplied as they go up the channel, so fresh bread would be on hand. And for the Spanish, we do know they took a fair bit of bread with them, as well as flour, with which to make more bread. So while they would have had ship's biscuit, we're just using bread for the minute because it's a little bit easier. So we've got our one pound of bread. <laughs> and now this is the uh, interesting bit. One gallon of beer which my handy little conversion chart tells me is eight pints. Now, considering I've used up all but one of the glasses that are currently clean in the house, there's no way we're storing eight pints of beer in what's probably a three-quarter pint glass, which means we're going to have to use the carafe, so I've emptied them of water. And knowing in advance just exactly how much beer we were going to need, I decided well, let's go and get the cheapest beer, because, well, I may regret that, because of course we've now got to see how this all works on a dietary basis, but with no particular sponsorship involved, let's start emptying beer, shall we? Oh, and of course, to make sure you don't get you, the rings, they've glued the things all together. That uh, I suppose it's a good idea. Right, let's see how much beer we actually have. So we need eight pints. If you can hear little whines in the background, that's because Floppy the dog would dearly like some of this beer, but he's not going to have it. Because a drunken deer hound is the last thing we need. While we're waiting for the uh, head to cool off on that first one, I'm going to start opening the rest, because these are apparently pint cans. Well, in fact, if they are pint cans, and it looks like this one is proving that it is going to be so, then while we're waiting for that one to settle, and I open up the rest, we can <laughs> envy or commiserate with the English sailors. Ooh. Okay, you're going in there. Because after all, yes, on the one hand, they have a gallon of beer per day. On the other hand, it may be as bad as this stuff. <laughs> so. I wonder if YouTube's going to let this stand. As you can guess, one of my jobs that I have not done in the past is barman. <laughs> Weirdly enough, Mrs. Rack, who you can probably hear giggling away in the background there, has at one point worked behind a bar and is probably going to murder me for my pouring technique later on. There's that last glass. <laughs> this bit's getting sped up, I can guarantee you. Mm -hmm. How long does a beer head take to go down?
All right. So, impossibly the world's worst barman style. There's the English daily liquid and standard dry ration. Yeah. Okay. And so, well, there you go. The Spanish daily liquid ration. The English daily liquid ration. Um, and that, yeah, either two, point, two loaves of bread, two points of bread. <laughs> or one loaf of bread. And now for the more interesting bits and pieces. We've had a look at the basic daily ration uh, for both sides. Now we're going to look at the day-to-day -day rations. So we've got our, our daily starter here. This is a Spanish starter with our two pounds of bread, our pint of strong wine and four pints of water, or three pints of water actually in four glasses. So on Monday, you would be given six ounces of cheese and three ounces of beans or chickpeas to go with your ration. So that's your full daily ration for a Monday. This is also your full daily ration for a Wednesday. So Mondays and Wednesdays, you get this. Then on Tuesday, it's a bit fun. You get either six ounces of fish, which could be tuna or cod, or squid, or you could get the choice that we have for you today, which is five sardines. <laughs> um, no wonder they were ready to revolt. On top of that, you got another three ounces of beans or chickpeas, plus you got one and a half ounces of olive oil and one quarter of a pint of vinegar. Now, I don't know much about Mediterranean cooking because of course the Spanish speaking half of my ancestry is from South America, but I'm guessing that maybe the vinegar has something to do with the sardines? Maybe? Um, who knows? I mean, you can make some oil fried bread and I suppose the, the chickpeas as well. I don't know really what you do with the vinegar, to be perfectly honest, but there you go. That's your Tuesday and also your Sunday rations. So take those away. So we've had Monday, Thursday, Tuesday and Sunday, and that leaves us with so we've had Monday so we've had Monday and Wednesday as well as, as So we've had Monday and Wednesday where you get your cheese and chickpeas. We've had Tuesday, Friday and actually Saturday, which is when you get either your fish, squid, sardines, plus chickpeas, plus oil, plus vinegar. And there's one more set of days. There is, of course, Thursday and Sunday. And for Thursday and Sunday, each day you get a slightly different dish, which is six ounces of bacon and just two ounces of rice. Plus, of course, every day you're getting your two pounds of bread, your pint of wine, and your three pints of water. So that's each daily ration for the Spanish in the Spanish Armada. And here, of course, we have our English base ration, our hilarious amounts of beer and uh, one pound of bread. Of course, the beer would probably be slightly weaker than your average beer today, although given the uh, rather cheap quality of this beer, this is probably about as weak as they would have had. Nonetheless, there was also a varied diet for the English. On a Monday, you get a pint of peas to go with your eight pints of beer and no less than a whole pound of bacon. Clearly, they knew what they were doing with that one. Um, so that's just your Monday ration. Then on Tuesdays, you would get your standard ration and this. 
a nice lump of fresh or salt beef. But again, we've gone with fresh because the English Navy is right on its own doorstep. Now, it was actually two pounds of fresh or salted beef, and this is about one and a half pounds of beef, but this was the biggest bit of beef I could find in the supermarket that wasn't a full roasting joint that I'd then have to cut into pieces. So given that corruption was a thing back then, let's just say the purser's kept, you know, four to six ounces of beef for himself. And that's Tuesday. A big lump of meat, a big lump of bread, and a lot of beer. Uh, yeah, you'd also get this on Thursdays and Sundays. And then that leaves us with three other days, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, you would get the same dish. So actually in both cases, you've got three different menus, but they're being served mixed up throughout the week. So on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, you would get the following. Two ounces of butter, which we'll put over here. Then you would also get some cheese. This is four ounces of cheese. And then you would either get one quarter of a stockfish or one eighth of a ling. And if you're wondering what a stockfish is, that is a cod that's been preserved in a very basic way. It doesn't have any extra additives. Now, exactly how large one quarter of a cod is varies throughout history. Uh, thanks to overfishing, cod these days is actually a little bit smaller than the cod they would have had easy access to back then off of the Newfoundland Grand Banks. And you'll notice, of course, although we used sardines for our Spanish one, cod was an option. And this is what I mean by the interconnectedness of trade, because cod was fairly universal across the Atlantic, so everyone could get their hold on it, plus it was traded quite a bit in barrels. So looking back, doing a bit of research, and boy is that a bit of a rabbit hole you want to go down. How large was a cod over history? I eventually came to the conclusion that this is about the size of one quarter of a cod of the 15th and 16th centuries. So this is your Tuesday, sorry, your Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday diet. Now, of course, you could save some each day. So you got your butter on your Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, so you might save a bit of your butter to go with your beef on other days, or perhaps your bacon on the Monday, and likewise with the cheese. But it's fairly easy to see, you know, fish, bread, cheese, butter, you know, <laughs> if they hadn't invented the sandwich by then, which they hadn't, technically speaking, I rather suspect a bunch of people pretty much did, they just didn't officially name it. So, that's all the day-to-day -day menu options for the English and for the Spanish, <laughs> and to give you some idea of exactly how much food is involved, I'm now going to put out all of the food, Right, so apart from the water, <laughs> we have assembled all the food that you've seen today. And obviously bear in mind that this technically doesn't even represent one full day's, well, it represents one full day's ration for one side, but everything else is in little bits and pieces because you've got your two pounds of bread, you've got all of your beer, you've got the wine there. You can imagine the water there. You've got vinegar, chickpeas, oil, bacon, bacon, beef, rice, sardines, lots of cheese, some butter, some fish, got the vinegar there, the pint of peas. So these are all the foods that were available to sailors in the Armada in 1588. Plus, of course, as we said, you might find some tuna or some squid or something in there as well. And the beef might be salted or fresh, and you might have ship's biscuit instead of bread. <laughs> And of course, as ships were captured and as ships traded back and forth, obviously not between the two navies, but just generally, you might have different types of supplies showing up on any given day. But this is a good representative idea of exactly what you would be eating and drinking if you were aboard the Armada ships in 1588 on the respective sides. Now, I've got to try and make something of this um, to eat it. But uh, that's a story for another time. Toodles.